Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer with this morning mountain weather update. Let's jump into it. Here's what I'm seeing this morning. Uh, this West Coast storm track is going to be a thing. It looks like all the way through about 1.5 and then maybe we see things shift after that. But we're going to have these closed lows hit the West Coast, BC, Washington, Oregon, California through probably 1.5. And that will push the snow levels higher at times um, through all of those areas along the West Coast. And like I talked about yesterday, very low moisture survival rate. So as these storms hit the West Coast and then they try to move into the interior, it's just like the moisture just disintegrates before it reaches Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, uh, Montana, Colorado. Now that may change, like I'm saying, after uh, after 1-5, but until that point, it's going to be very difficult, challenging, and dry across the interior Rockies. And I want to talk about something called stratospheric warming coming up here in just a few minutes and what that could mean for a pattern change in January. I'm also going to talk about the Northeast just a little bit. Uh, rain through 1229, changing over to some light snow on 1230. Not much has changed there. Let me take you over to uh, water vapor satellite imagery. So you're looking at a, a very active Pacific flow pattern here with areas of low pressure lined up all the way back into the into the West Pacific here. And again, the trajectory just takes them into the West Coast and then there's just not much we can do to keep that moisture surviving into the interior. It just dries up. Um, let me just show you what the forecast is here for the radar and satellite. So that's the situation by this afternoon. Here comes the next area of low pressure, the next trough hitting the west coast. Um, so that's late 1229. Here's 1230. We're going to see some snow here across Mammoth, Tahoe, Shasta, but it's going to be at the higher elevations. You know, I, I think we're looking at uh, potentially 7,000 feet, maybe 7,500 feet at times. Um, that'll fluctuate, but that means just means the snow is going to be at the higher elevations. All right, let's move into uh, 1230 in the afternoon. That storm tries to make its move into the interior, but a lot of that moisture just dries up. A couple of flurries or snow showers over Colorado. Um, that's it. And then some snow showers make their way through Idaho, Montana, but it's very light. Um, this is one, two, very late in the day. Another area of low pressure gets, uh, is primed to move into the West Coast, probably one, three, one, four. So it's just low pressure after low pressure with that West Coast trajectory. Let me uh, talk just a bit about the jet stream here. So this is the forecast on one, three. Notice, you know, and I was just showing you that on the future, on the forecast radar and satellite, that next trough coming in around one, three, one, four. You can see it right there in California, and then that would try to make its move to the interior, but I think that's going to drop pretty far to the south, and uh, there's just not going to be a lot to, that's going to make it into the interior with that. A little further down the road, so this is 1-6. This is after that 1-5 sort of a timeline I was talking about. You can see there's definitely a, a trough coming out of uh, California, but th there's also um, some northern branch support. I like the position of the northern branch. It's possible with that we can rotate down some colder air after 1-5. If that holds, I think that would be a, a pretty good pattern um, heading into uh, mid-January. All right, let me just talk a bit about uh, this. So we often, this is more of a macro forecasting to a global type of pattern looking at this, this is, um, we're looking at zonal mean winds, winds up in the stratosphere. So sometimes what we'll do is uh, we can look to the stratosphere to figure out or give us clues as to what's happening down here in what we call the troposphere. That's where we live. That's where all the weather happens down here. And so everything's connected, right, uh, through all these layers. And so we can look high to see what's going to happen low. And it's, you can see the big shift coming in the winds um, by probably the 10th roughly of, of uh, January. Um, so there's this big shift in the wind. Sometimes this could mean that unlocks cold air and then it could pour south. We could see that jet pattern bring some of that cold air south into the lower 48. That's the bottom line. That's a very simplified explanation, but that's a possibility as we head into January that we see that pattern shift and we bring some colder air south. And that's really what we need because we've had an awful lot of rain in places like the Northeast and an awful lot of high snow levels out West. So this could be a changer. All right, let's look at the numbers here. There's nothing really to write home about through 1230. Um, some snow in the Sierra at the higher elevations. Um, let's look down the road. So this is 1231 through 16. And really, um, what you see up in the Pacific Northwest in Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, that happens late in the period as that pattern starts to shift and we could bring in 
some colder air. In the Sierra, again, high snow levels through most of the period, but you're going to see low pressure after low pressure come through um, and drop some snow at the higher elevations of the Sierra and rain at lower elevations. So that's just really the tip of the iceberg, as you can see up in the Pacific Northwest. That could be that leading edge of um, potentially some colder air and maybe a pattern shift. In the northeast, again, rain through the 29th and then changing over to some light snow on the 30th, with most of that accumulation happening in northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and northern Maine. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this morning mountain weather update. Always appreciate you tuning in here, and take care.